What if I told you that your prints actually aren't finished once they come off the bed? Huh? Well, today I am going to be combining 3D printing with laser engraving to unlock details that 3D printing alone can't handle. I'm going to tell you what works, what doesn't, the settings I used, and a project that ties it all together right after this. Welcome to the show that sets your mind free. Tech and gadgets, 3D surprise. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Captain Creativity. I am your host, David Merrill, and today we are merging these two crazy worlds, 3D printing and laser engraving into one. And you're probably wondering, well, why on earth are you doing that? Well, I'll tell you, because you could get really cool results with it. I'm talking about really fine detail on text, on logos, on patterns that can enhance your 3D prints to a whole new level and laser engraving with the right laser engraver could do just that. Today we're gonna go into this and I'm gonna show you a really cool project that really ties this all together. I'd like to thank Anycubic today for sponsoring our video. Proceeds of our channel go towards donations like 3D printers and other makerspace equipment for schools and organizations. Today, Anycubic would like you guys to know that their version two of the Cobra 3 line is now available for pre-order. Before we go into that, I want to tell you that I am a big supporter of Anycubic. I've had Anycubic printers really from the beginning, from resin printers to FDM printers. I recently got the Cobra 3 Max, which has been amazing. I actually just printed another Venom helmet, as you can see over here. The Cobra 3 has also been a workhorse and to hear now that their version 2 has come out, well I'm really excited to get my hands on one myself. Let me tell you a little bit about the version 2 and what are the upgrades. Well number one, it's bigger. It actually went from 250 by 250 by 260. They bumped it up to 255 by 255 by 260. So that's number one. They have also improved quality by increasing the Y axis from 40 millimeters to 60 millimeters in the rod. In terms of the X axis, they now have SG15 bearings as well. And all of that just helps improve print quality. In addition to that, there's a built-in webcam now, a 720p camera, so you can monitor your prints. On top of that, they now have regional leveling. So instead of leveling your entire bed, it only levels the area where your print is going to be, which is actually much smarter. In addition to that, they actually replaced the extruder with the same extruder that you're gonna find on the Cobra S1, which is their Core XY model. And that nozzle is easier to change, easier for maintenance, and it also improves things like leakage and dripping and all that other stuff to ensure that your prints are coming out beautifully. And of course, when it comes to multicolor printing, this unit can support up to eight different colors. Their standard baseline goes for an early bird special now of $399, and you get one Ace Pro. If you decide to spend $658, you could go to the V2 Combo Bundle, which will give you two Ace Pros, and they work seamlessly with the Cobra 3 V2. Anyway, you can find our affiliate links for the version two of the Cobra 3 in the description below. Okay, before we get started, we have to first choose a laser engraver type. And there's a lot of different types out there. There's blue diode, CO2, fiber. And when it comes to 3D prints, as specifically PLA, the best type of laser engraver is going to be fiber. Here I have the X-Tool F1 Ultra, and it happens to be both a blue diode and a fiber laser. Why is a fiber laser important? It's important because it moves at really high speeds. And because it's able to engrave at such high speeds, the concentrated energy as it's engraving isn't staying on the object long enough for it to burn into the plastic. And this contrasts to the blue dial laser, which actually goes at a much slower speed. And that's why if you try to use a blue dial laser on 3D prints, you're more than likely to end up burning or melting your plastic. You really want to get the best results and put on a beautiful pattern or text onto your 3D prints. The fiber is the way to go. Okay, so now it's time to start engraving on some of our 3D prints, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get started with that in the X-Tool Creator Program. But first, I wanna also thank X-Tool for sending over the F1 Ultra. I'm actually planning on doing a full unboxing and setup review in another week or so, so stay tuned for that, and I'm gonna show you some really cool projects that I was able to do with this machine. For today, we're gonna to really just focus on using it for engraving 3D prints. So when it comes to choosing your filament, that's gonna be important because the color matters. If you choose something too light, 
you're not gonna end up getting a good contrasting color when the material is being removed. So I would recommend sticking with a black or a gray. The darker, the better. And so it didn't really make a difference what type of brand I went with. Most of them all worked as long as the color was right. Don't try this on TPU, it's not gonna work. Pet G also works really well. That's all you need to know when it comes to choosing your color. Okay, let's go ahead and take that off. That looks pretty good. All right, to get started with Xtool, they have this really easy to use intuitive interface called Creative Space, and it really is very simple. You have everything you need on here from shapes to text. You can even import from their maker library, and they even have AI integration to create different designs and patterns and embossments that you could throw right onto your material. We're not gonna go through all of this today because I'm gonna leave that for a separate video where I'll do a full unboxing and setup of the Xtool F1 Ultra but today let's get started with a project. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that they have a maker library and in their maker library they have tons and tons of cool projects to choose from. Because we want to work with PLA I figured okay is there something that already blends PLA with laser engraving and sure enough this really funny 3D flamingo model came up with fun fact to the left and the right of it and I said all right that's kind of cool let's work with this but I want to give it a little bit more flair. So I decided to basically do this out of a K2SO droid from Andor, as well as from Rogue One in Star Wars. And first thing I decided to do was start actually taking this image and creating a new 3D model. I went over to ChatGPT and I uploaded them both. I said, replace Flamingo with Robot Attached. Boom, got it. Now I gotta just remove the text. That was perfect. And then I decided to go with something like this. I then went over to Maker World and I went to Maker Lab. In Maker Lab, I was able to import this image and it gave me a really cool K2SO droid. So now I went ahead and put that onto a little plate and now I'm ready to start testing out the plate and see what text works the best for me. I wanna take a moment to thank Batch Research Lab for putting together these amazing videos and this website on painstaking research on the best settings that you can use on different types of plastics out there. This was so useful and they make their test files available on their website, batchmade.studio, and you can get right into it and download some of their test files right there so that you too can test out what is the best settings possible for your plastic. So before I get into the full model, I wanted to first test out the text and make sure that it comes out really nicely. I'm gonna try first on the Sunlu PLA Plus, and here I was able to grab those settings from that test file, and now we could go ahead and set it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do over here is click on this button, and it's gonna auto measure the distance between the lens and the material. Once you have that setting, you can now go ahead and take a picture of your work area just by clicking this. And now we could see a great picture of what we have. We're now going to line up. I just put this here temporarily just to know the size of the card. I'm gonna actually remove that. And I'm gonna make sure that this is all on the card. Okay. So now I could go ahead and make sure that this is working and I'm gonna go ahead and hit framing. And when I do the framing, it will actually create a blue outline uh, to make sure that this is gonna end up exactly on the piece. So let's take a look. So now I can see over here that the blue line is definitely going right on the material within the boundaries that I need it to be. So I'm now gonna hit process. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. So now on the touch interface, we're gonna press this X tool button bar and it's gonna go ahead and start the engraving. Another cool aspect of X tool is that you could choose the materials that you're engraving on right over here. If you don't see the material, you can always go ahead and create your own, but you could also go over to their website and they have tons and tons and tons of materials on here and you can probably search for it. In my case, I did PLA and I was able to get a bunch of different PLA options. So there's a lot of different settings here that you can import and get going right away. Okay, let's see how it came out. That is really, really impressive. The detail of the text at such a small print, there is no way you can never get that kind of level of detail by 3D printing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and throw some text on. 
I'm gonna put it in something like K2SO, Imperial Droid Turned Rebel Hero. I'm gonna put a few fun facts over here. And if you wanna go ahead and change this, I'm gonna upload this and share this template. Basically, you'll be able to just import it right into Xtools Creative Space, just like I did. You can then just change the text as you see please. All you gotta do is just double click on it and then basically put in whatever text you wanna put in there. Really simple to do. Go ahead and let's frame this out. So we can see over here that the blue line is within the borders of the material, so we're good there. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit process just to see how it's gonna end up looking. And we're gonna hit start, press this, and we're gonna get started. All right, so it came out really nice. I have my text on the top, I have my fun facts. It's really legible, nice and clean. And now I'm ready to actually do the full multicolor piece on my AnyCubic Cobra 3 Max and let's get going. Okay, so I gone ahead and thrown the model up on any cubic slicer next. Everything has been painted on, ready to go. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit remote print. We have white, gray, black, everything is set. I already just leveled the bed, so I don't really need that right now. And I am gonna go ahead and start the print. Okay, there it is. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put it on the engraver now. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and loaded up our model onto the working area, um, I have my template over here and we can actually just kind of move that right over just like that. I'm happy with that. That looks actually pretty good. And I'm gonna go for that 100% power at 1700 millimeters per second. I'm gonna wanna go with the light brown tan text. Here we go, we're gonna frame it out make sure everything is good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit process. All right, let's go ahead and see how it came out. There it is. K2SO, Imperial Droid Turned Rebel Hero. And then we have some of those fun facts I put on the bottom about the height, uh, you know, hates uh, cheaters, <laughs> X, uh, X Empire, and very sensitive. <laughs> All right, so another thing I wanna show you is I'm gonna just flip it over because I kind of just wanna put a pattern on the back side of it. Here we have a, a bunch of patterns that we could choose from. I'm just basically copying and pasting the same one. They snap together to make it look like it's consistent. And it's okay that it goes off of it because it's gonna just hit the metal plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add two more down here. And then I wanna see how this ends up looking. Because I flipped it over, it's a little bit elevated. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this to get a new material height distance. Let's go ahead and choose the one that we were looking at earlier that has a little bit of a lighter grayish look to it. So we're going to go ahead and hit process and I am going to hit start. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how it came out. Oh my goodness, look at that. See, look how cool that is. And you could have just as easily put a logo on that. Um, it came out beautiful. There is no way 3D printing uh, can do that. Not to that level of perfect detail. And so just imagine just being able to mark up some of your prints in text or logo or patterns. But there you go. But I am very, very impressed. This is just such a cool way to enhance your 3D prints. So anyway, yeah, that came out great. I'm gonna now try to scale this up, make it even larger and see how it comes out. Oh my God, look how good this came out. So I made this a lot bigger. I made this like almost like about 200 millimeters in height and that came out amazing. Much better when you print it much larger. The details really come out way better. Let's throw this onto the engraver and get out our title and fun facts. Okay, so I threw on the text. It looks great. Love the fact that it's now a much bigger build and so I could get more text on it. I threw a little extra text on the side, some more additional fun facts about K2SO. And I could definitely go a lot further with this, but for the time being, let's throw it onto the F1 Ultra and let's get started. Oh, that looks so good. Well, there you have it. Fantastic, looks even better when it's bigger. So here's the original one that we did. And here is the much bigger one at 200 millimeters in height. I think it came out fantastic. So I tried a lot of different settings, but at the end of the day, 
I've come to realize that you need to have at minimum 50% power and a thousand millimeters per second in the speed. I'm going to include some default settings that work for me. And the ones that worked for me the most depended on how light I wanted the text to be. So for example, when I wanted my text to have a darker tan look, I ended up going with 100% on the power and 1700 millimeters per second on the speed. When it came to getting a lighter look, something closer to white or very light gray, that one ended up going at 60% and 3,134 millimeters per second. All right, so that's a wrap. I had a great time working on this project. It was really a lot of fun and I love working with the X-Tool F1 Ultra. It really took my 3D prints to a whole new level. The laser engraving with the fiber laser was able to get really crisp details in text, in my logo, in my design, and even on patterns. It really, really blew my mind. The biggest caveat, of course, was the fact that it was kind of limited to the darker materials. I am kind of interested to hear your thoughts on your experiences with laser engraving, whether it's with blue diode or whether you have been using it with a fiber laser engraver. Have you tried any other colors with great success? Please make sure you put them in the comments below. Now, in terms of who this will be meant for, if you're in a school setting or you run a 3D printing business and you're constantly doing a ton of prints that require text or extra detail, this pairing is amazing. And I think it would be a huge value add to your makerspace, uh, school, or business. With that being said, the X-Tool F1 Ultra isn't just for PLA and enhancing your 3D prints, but you can use it obviously to engrave on metal, wood, plastic, slate, and much more. It's an amazing laser engraver all around. And honestly, the fact that it has both the blue diode plus the fiber laser is really a winning combo. So if you're interested in picking up the F1 Ultra, I'm gonna put a link in the description below and you might wanna check it out. I do know there's a sale going on right now. Anyway, I would be really interested to hear your feedback on the pairing of laser engraving with 3D printing. Is it something that you think that you would find benefit in? What kind of projects would you use it for? Please put it in the comments below. So anyway, Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. Happy printing and engraving.